In this video, we're going to talk about solving inequalities that involve quadratic functions. So there are some steps that we're going to go through, and they're, they're very similar at the beginning. So solving inequalities that involve quadratic functions. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is rewrite the inequality so that we have zero on one side and our quadratic function on the other side. The next thing we're going to do is find the zeros of our quadratic function And then we're going to create a sign table. And I'll illustrate what this is as we go through the example. And then we're going to select our solution regions from the sign table. And then we will write the solution in the requested format. So let's just walk through an example here. So let's solve the quadratic inequality 2x squared is less than or equal to 3 minus x. So the first thing to do is move everything that's not 0 to one side of our inequality. So I'm going to move everything to the left. So I end up with 2x squared. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides and add x to both sides. So in standard form, this is 2x squared minus x plus 3 is less than or equal to 0. Now my next step is to find the zeros of the function 2x squared minus x plus 3. And there's two ways I could do this. I could factor this guy, or I could use the quadratic formula. Um, this one will factor without too much trouble. So let's, let's go ahead and factor him. So this is 2x squared. Oops, sorry. I'm going to use the AC method. And in the AC method, I multiply 2 times 3 to get 6. And I think of two factors of 6 that add up to negative 1. Hmm. Let's use a quadratic formula because I'm not thinking of a factorization like I should be able to. So let's, let's use the quadratic formula. So x is going to be equal to... Oh, it helps if I write this correctly, doesn't it? I made a mistake right here. That's better. Plus x minus 3. Uh, that will work much better. Plus x minus 3. Now, now we can factor this guy, but we'll go ahead and do it this way. So x is going to be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 times 2 times negative 3 all over 4. Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Yes. So that's negative 1 plus or minus Oh, square root of 25. 
which is five fourths. So x is negative six over four or four over four, which reduces to negative three halves and one. So now I'm gonna create that sign table. And to create that sign table, what I do is I put my zeros on a number line. And the way this works is this. If we think about the shape that this function would make if I were to graph it, it's going to look something like this. I missed it a little bit, but this is one. That's negative three halves. So what I want you to notice is that once we cross the x-axis, the sign of our y-coordinates doesn't change. And in fact, we can see from the graph that everywhere down here, our y is positive. Everywhere in between my two zeros, my y is negative. And everywhere above my biggest zero, my y is, again, positive. What I'm doing on my sign table is I am going to select test values from each of these three regions and determine the sign of my function when I plug in that test value. So for example, in my leftmost region, we could use negative four as my test value. And f of negative four is two times negative four squared minus four, so plus negative four minus three. So this is 16 times two is 32 minus four minus three. Well, that's gonna be a positive number. Now in my middle region, if a region includes zero, I'm almost always going to choose it as my test value. So f of zero is two times zero squared plus zero minus three. Well, that's a negative number. And up here in my rightmost region, I'll just use two as my test value. So this is two times two squared plus two minus three. Well, that, that's a positive number. Okay, so we've created our sign table. The next step is to choose our solution region. So the solution region is determined by this inequality. This inequality says that I want the regions where my y value, my functional values, are less than zero. So that means that my functional region is the middle one. And now we'll state the solution. So that means my x's need to be less, or sorry, between negative three halves and one or an interval notation. And this is the solution to that inequality we started with. All right, let's do another one. Let's do something that's a bit more complicated here. And this guy is going to include a couple of different techniques. So we want to solve two X minus X squared is greater than or equal to absolute value X minus one minus one. Oh boy. So we've got a quadratic and an absolute value. That's okay, we can handle this. Think about what we do with our absolute values. First step is to isolate the absolute value. 
Great, let's add one to both sides. So, and let's write this quadratic function in standard form. So I've got negative x squared plus 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to absolute value x minus 1. Or if I write this the way that I usually think of my absolute values, that means absolute value x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 1, which we remember means that I've got two possibilities. I've got x minus 1 is less than or equal to and negative x squared plus 2x plus 1, or the opposite of x minus 1. is less than or equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 1. Where did these come from? Well, they came from the piecewise definition of absolute value. Remember, the absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to the opposite of x minus 1 if that thing inside the absolute values is less than 0, or it is equal to itself if the thing inside the absolute values is greater than or equal to zero. Applying that definition to the inequality at hand leads to these two inequalities that we need to solve. So let's start with the top one. Let's start with x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 1. This is an inequality that involves a quadratic, so we're going to set it equal or get zero on one side by moving. Actually, let's do this. I don't like that negative in front of my x squared, so let's add x squared to both sides. Subtract 2x and subtract 1. So now I get x squared minus x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. That we can factor. That factors as x minus 2 times x plus 1. So those are the zeros of my quadratic. So that is my f of x. So my zeros are negative 1 and 2. So for a value less than negative 1, let's say negative 2, if I plug that into my factored form, I've got negative 2 minus 2, which is a negative number, times negative 2 plus 1, which is a negative number, and a negative times a negative is a positive. Now, if I plug in a number between negative 1 and 2, like, say, 0, I get a negative times a positive, which is a negative. And if I plug in a value greater than 2, I end up with a positive times a positive, which will give me a positive number. This solution says that I want the negative. So I want the middle region. So this says negative 1. This indicates that this inequality is satisfied by any x's that are greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 2. OK. But now I've got another inequality. I've got an or. And this or says, that negative x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 1. So let's distribute the negative through on the left. And we end up with negative x plus 1 
is less than or equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 1. Let's again move everything to the left. So I'm adding x squared, I'm subtracting 2x and subtracting 1. And this time I end up with x squared minus 3x is less than or equal to 0. So my quadratic function then in factored form is x times x minus 3. And my zeros are 0 and 3. And if I test these out, if I've got a number less than 0, I end up with a negative times a negative, which gives me a positive. Between 0 and 3, I end up with a positive times a negative, which gives me a negative. And greater than 3, I end up with a positive. I again want the negative, which means that this inequality indicates that x is between 0 and 3 will satisfy my inequality. So now the, the challenge is how do I put this all together into one solution? Well, we take the most narrow possible solution. Okay, so, so this is kind of like when we did this with equations. And we ended up with four solutions, and then we ended up eliminating two of them because they didn't fit the equation. They, they were not solutions. So if we think about what we've got, what we're doing is we need to take the interlap or the overlap of these two solutions. So one of them says that we've got a solution region that looks like this, right? That's my negative one is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to two. The other inequality says that we can go from zero to three. So the solution region that satisfies the overall inequality is the overlap of those two regions. In other words, my single solution is 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2, or in interval notation 0 to 2. And this is my solution. Now, how can you check that? Well, one way to check it is to go back up to your original inequality and take a look at a graph. So let's put the function on the left on one line. We'll call him f. And that's 2x minus x squared. And then on a second line, let's put the function on the right, which is absolute value. Well, let's call him g. absolute value x minus 1 minus 1. And what we are looking for is the region where the parabola is above the absolute value. And you can see that that, that is true for x is between 0 and 2. And if you want Desmos to check that for you, Desmos will do that. If you type f of x, that's the one on the left, so we want the greater than or equal to g of x, Desmos highlights that solution region for you. All right, I hope this has been helpful. I'll be back again with another video on the next chapter, next section rather.